Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey, you guys, welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered. So I know it's been a few weeks and thank you guys for your patience. So you guys have been asking me to do an esoteric breakdown on the whole Gabby Petito situation. I had posted about this a few weeks ago on the Discord and a lot of people wanted a podcast. So I'm going to do it today. Um, It's just been a lot of things with this story that has not sat well with my spirit. And I feel like the rabbit hole goes very, very deep with this story. And ironically enough, today they're doing an update on the whole Gabby Petito situation. If you guys do not know, her parents are finally speaking out and they're speaking to 60 Minutes um, Australia. And so MSNBC was covering this this morning and I got a chance to watch it. So I figured this is a perfect time to do that esoteric breakdown that I wanted to do a few weeks ago on her entire situation. So before I even go there... I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Speaking out for the first time since learning from the Teton County coroner, the cause of their daughter's death was strangulation. Gabby Petito's parents saying they regret their trust in her fiancé, Brian Laundrie. He just seemed like a nice guy. Speaking with 60 Minutes Australia on Sunday. I worried. Um, I told her to be careful, be safe, you know, make sure... The, to be aware of your surroundings, um, you know, don't trust everybody. You know, I knew, I, but I felt safe because she was with Brian and I, I felt like she would be okay. Outside looking in, she did look happy. But as we look more and more into this, it might not have been as, as great as people online perceived. The couple documented their road trip on social media, painting a picture of an adventurous young couple in love. But body cam video released by police in Utah revealed a very different dynamic. Petito and Laundry told officers they had been arguing. And when asked if she had been hit, Petito said she hit Laundry first. Where'd you hit him? I slapped him. You, you slapped him first? That exchange, a late clue to Gabby's family that the relationship wasn't as picture perfect as her Instagram, may have led people to believe. I saw a, a, a young girl that needed someone to just hug her and keep her safe. I just felt so bad for her. I wish that she reached out to me. Laundry returned home to Florida without Petito on September 1st, and then disappeared a few weeks later and hasn't been seen since. The manhunt to find him now entering its fifth week. Petito's family once again alleging the laundries are hiding information. I think silence speaks volumes. This, I believe they know probably, if not everything, they know most of the information. Steve Bertolino, an attorney for the Laundry family, called Petito's death a tragedy last week, but reiterated that Brian is not a suspect in Petito's disappearance or death. Bertolino previously stated last month that Brian's parents do not know where he is. Laundry is the only person of interest in the case. A federal warrant for his arrest alleges he committed debit card fraud between August 30th and September 1st, around the time Petito was last seen alive. He's a coward. NBC News reached out to the Laundry family attorney for a response to the 60 Minutes interview, and he declined to comment. The coroner last week announced Gabby's body had been in the Wyoming wilderness three to four weeks before it was discovered on September. All right, so you guys just watched that clip. So it had me thinking about what I posted in the Discord two weeks ago. And basically, a lot of things were just really disturbing me with the whole Gabby Petito case. Because at that point, it came out that she was featured in a 2013 music video for the Sandy Hook children. And the video's called I'm Irreplaceable. And the woman who wrote it ended up doing an interview with the news as well. So when that came out about this random woman that nobody knew about really until she went missing, being in the Sandy Hook music video, it kind of gave me chills. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out this interview really quick. Well, a News 12 exclusive now, a music video featuring. 
Well, the News 12 exclusive now, a music video featuring a then 14-year-old Gabby Petito with a profound message. It was made years ago by a Long Island singer and was meant to combat violence against children after the Sandy Hook shooting. News 12's Jackie Lucas shows us the video and spoke with the woman behind it. It's not This song, titled Irreplaceable, came out after the Sandy Hook school shooting back in 2012. The music video shot right here on Long Island. The two little boys in the video, Gabby Petito's younger brothers, and Gabby also in the video holding a sign that says she's irreplaceable. And it's just ironic that she's in this video. Long Island native Deb Henson wrote, produced, and sang the song. Now, after Gabby's death, she says it has a whole new meaning. I haven't listened to the song in a while, and I'm listening to the lyrics and just, you know, wow. Because, and the lyrics are just so fitting now, it's almost eerie. To us. She vividly remembers her encounters with Gabby and her family. I don't want to sound melancholy, you know, and um, but we had a um, like a magical weekend. It was two days of filming on a Saturday and Sunday. And I just remember, um, you know, it was really hard for everybody because of the subject matter. And um, Gabby was such a bright light. You know, she was I mean, even at 14, she was just this kid who is just really sweet and just wanted to be involved and help. Now Deb says she is dedicating her song to Gabby. She hopes it will inspire others to love and be kind and remind everyone that they're irreplaceable. I do believe what the song says. I believe things happen for a reason. And I know something big and bright is gonna happen out of this eventually because this did not just happen in vain. The end is a I'm Jackie Lucas, News 12 Long Island. It's a beautiful song. The lyrics are chilling now. If you want to watch that video, it's on our website under numbers and links. Deb says any money raised by downloading the song on iTunes or Spotify will go toward a fund to help Gabby's family. She was manipulated. She was abused. She didn't deserve this ending. She didn't deserve the abuse. Blonde hair fell around her like a halo She was an upstate New York angel without wings All right, so you guys just watched the news clip and I also added those other two TikTok videos. As we know, this story took the world by storm. I mean, you had people literally turning into true crime detectives overnight it was really the internet that helped crack this case. But what is it about Gabby Petito that had so many people waiting with like bated breath on her return to find out what was going to happen with her? You had people making songs. And that, the lady who made that song up about Gabby, uh, the, the last TikTok video, her voice is beautiful. You know, it's such a sweet song. But what was it about her that captivated the nation? I know some people like Joy Reid were saying this is, you know, um, missing white girl syndrome and things like that. And it's because she's blonde hair, blue eyed. She got a lot of attention, which is true. You know, and I've talked about this in my live stream that a lot of times when white women go missing, it is, you know, the world has to stop. It is national news. We all remember the whole Natalie Holloway case that was on the news for months. Elizabeth Smart on the news for months. Black girl missing in the inner city. Couldn't tell you her name. You know, it's sad, but true. But I also felt like with people be being so mystified and so entrenched in this entire situation, I kind of felt like it was pretty esoterical. Like it was something with this story that was pulling a lot of people to her. And as I started digging more into her social media page and going more into her Instagram page, I found a lot of disturbing things that really did not make a lot of sense to my spirit. And I had to keep it real. And that's why I had posted on the Discord, like, what is going on with these pictures on Gabby Petito's page? And these were the last pictures of her that she posted on her Instagram and they came off very esoterical to me. And I want to go ahead and just kind of break down what I saw and how I felt looking at these pictures on her page. And I found it very interesting because I felt like what a big coincidence this is 
that this same woman who is basically taking over the national headlines, everybody's concerned for her, everybody's looking for her. She also just happened to be in the Sandy Hook music video. So I found that strange. Now, what else I found very interesting is that back on September 19th, her father took to Instagram and he shared a photo of Gabby Petito in front of these angel wings. They're real colorful angel wings. And basically his caption is hashtag Gabby Petito. She touched the world. So when I seen that, that kind of made my tin hat tingle because I'm like, hold up. Who else came out not even a year ago who supposedly changed the world? And I remember when George Floyd's daughter kept saying that she was sitting on top of his so-called twin, his esoterical twin, um, Stephen Jackson's shoulders, and she kept saying, my daddy changed the world. Y'all remember this video? Go ahead and check it out. She did what? All right, so you guys just saw that. So I thought it was very interesting. And I've seen a lot of people posting that on social media with Gabby Petito's pictures. Even at her memorial service, you saw this picture of her with these angel wings and people writing on there, Gabby changed the world. Now, what I really found interesting about those particular angel wings that stood out to me was the fact that on those angel wings, there were two crescent moons. If you guys know anything about the two crescent moons and angel wings, it reminded me and a lot of people of the Baphomet. If you look at a picture of the Baphomet, which is a hermaphrodite goat deity, right? The devil. He's sitting in front of angel wings and there's two crescent moons. And those two crescent moons stand for as above and so below. So I thought it was very interesting that this is the picture that her father shared, just like in the Baphomet photo. So that really kind of gave me chills looking at that picture because that's where my mind went. I thought it was very strange that they would put crescent moons right in the middle of angel wings. And another thing that I found very interesting as well is that when I went on Gabby's page, she also had pictures of monarch butterflies. And for y'all who don't know, the monarch butterfly has a lot of significance, okay, in different cultures. For some people, they're just beautiful butterflies, you know, they float around in your garden, in Christianity, the monarch butterfly means transformation. It means there's a change coming. It could mean transforming from the physical realm into the spiritual realm, meaning somebody's going to die. It can also mean change. Maybe you're switching jobs and starting a new career. Maybe you're inventoring on a new degree. So the monarch butterfly has a lot of significance when it comes to change and manifesting change. But if you want to go really deep with it, the monarch butterfly has also been used in MK Ultra. So a lot of people talk about that, the MK Ultra programming. And that's why sometimes you see a lot of celebrities with butterflies around them and butterfly fly headbands and clothing and skirts and, you know, all types of stuff. And a lot of times when it's tied to celebrities, people tend to connect it to MK Ultra mind control. Look into it. And it blows my mind, but that, that's the culture. It's a culture of fear for sure. Um, you know, and, and it's a, a big culture of... Uh, mind control too. MK Ultra mind control rules in Hollywood. If if you don't know, Google that and look into it. So the whole butterfly symbolism goes very very deep. You guys can do more research on your own time. But what really bothered me was when I looked at her last picture. It just kind of gave me chills. And she's posing in front of this wall. And there's monarch butterflies on the wall, of course. But if you look at her caption, it's very strange. Her final caption on Earth says, Happy Halloween. And then there's a fly and then there's a jack-o'-lantern. And I mean, this would be cool because we're now in the month of October. But let's not forget, she posted this August 25th. She posted this in the summertime. Why is she wishing people a happy Halloween? It's October 19th right now, the day that I'm doing this podcast. It's not even Halloween now, and I wouldn't wish anybody happy Halloween on the 19th. So isn't it strange that she was wishing people happy Halloween way back on August 25th? And on top of that, if you go through her photos of that same day, there's another picture of her, and she's holding a pumpkin. It's like a crochet pumpkin. Well, where did she find this pumpkin from? There wasn't really any Halloween decorations in the store around that time. Granted, there's Halloween decorations now, and in September, I saw some in the store, but I don't recall seeing many Halloween decorations 
you know, in the month of August. But maybe it's an old pumpkin. Maybe it's something that she's been had. I don't know. It just came out very esoterical to me. First, the picture with the so-called angel wings that reminded me of the Baphomet. Then we have her in front of this whole monarch butterfly symbolism. And she's talking about Happy Halloween. And if you guys know anything about Halloween, it's a very, very spiritual day. That's when the veil is the thinnest between the world that we live in now and the spiritual world. And a lot of rituals, a lot of things go on during the month of October, but especially during Halloween. Because that is when the veil is the thinnest. So... I just found that very, very interesting as well. Now, here are some more things I found interesting concerning the books that both Gabby and her boyfriend, Brian Laundrie, were posting on social media. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.